Next, we have an unquestionable highlight. We have a panel session co-hosted with IGB Affiliate that will focus on the hot button topics of marketing, media, and affiliation. Our speakers are Fintan Costello, Managing Director of Bonus Finder. He's coming in remotely. Dr. Andreas Blaue, General Counsel at LeadLink. You've seen uh, him already this morning. And uh, last and definitely not least, Frank Hesse, Managing Director of Sport Campo, longtime veteran in the industry. The discussion will be moderated by Michael Caselli, Chairman of Clarion Gaming. Michael, thank you for coming over. And please join me on the stage here. You can stand up, you can sit down. My choice. The floor is uh, yours. Thank you, Willem. Thank you very much. And thank you for, uh, for hosting us today in this very unique time in history. Ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you all also for attending Gaming in Germany and this very special session, which we're doing in conjunction with one of our brands, iGaming Business Affiliate. My name is Michael Caselli. I'm a 23-year industry veteran and the chairman of Clearing Gaming. Um, and as you've all known for decades, Germany has been a lucrative market. Um, it's been a uh, fairly liberal market in terms of what players were able to do. And all that existed because it existed in a very gray market scenario. Well, this of course has all changed. And I think what we're trying to consider today and what's maybe yet to be fully considered in our sessions earlier is what happens when you take a market that's <clears throat> largely been guided by free market principles for several decades and impose a fairly restrictive regime in terms of stakes and playing velocity on that market. So in this session, we're going to try to convey our, our best guess as to what's going to happen to the player supply chain and whether these players are coming from above the line mass media, affiliate marketing, or something in between. And as the saying goes, may we all live in interesting times. Willem has introduced my guests, who are now all here on our screen. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining me to our speakers. And I'd like to start with a question for Andreas. Uh, last Thursday, on October the 15th, the transitional regi regime for the new interstate treaty, of course, began. What changes have been applied since then for advertising of gambling offers in the German market? Thank you. One second, Andreas. We can't hear you in the room yet. Uh, let's move to, while we resolve I can, this I can time, move ahead if we can you, yes, you want. please. Thank you. Yep. We'll come back to you, Andreas. Uh, Fintan, are you, uh, are you live? I sure am. Oh, that's super. Great. In that case, let me ask you a different question. Um, what early data do we have since last week's transitional legislation began regarding player activity? So, in terms of player activity, I think it's still way too early to tell because it's been less than a week. What we're looking at instead is more looking at the operator's behavior and what they're doing um, in the lead up to the 15th and what's happened since. So what we've seen is a, a, the majority of operators seem to be taking a, a wait and see approach with a, only a handful being super proactive in communication, say with affiliates, uh, as an example. So some operators have obviously had to rebrand so if you've got the word casino in your brand name, that doesn't exist anymore. There's like uh, slots, Vegas seem to be the two popular uh, replacement choices, which are quite smart. And um, welcome offers still seem to be the same. And then a, a lot of uh, operators then are basically just nothing's really changed. They've updated their website. There's been no communication to to affiliates. When we look at it from an affiliate perspective, obviously uh, affiliates have been updating their website based on operator feedback to be compliant. And then overall, obviously, you know, Google is not aware of these changes. So rankings for affiliates and things like this haven't changed. So it's pretty much business as usual um, with a few changes on the operator side. So you, you, you seem to indicate that um, oftentimes suppliers in this market might not be aware that changes are afoot. I suppose that would be especially true for, for instance, affiliates or mass media agencies that, Again, here? that uh, sell into the German market, digital agencies, et cetera. Would you say that's a fair assessment and there's a lot of education to come? Um, or do you think that we're just going to one day switch off those suppliers in favor of local German suppliers? 
I think the the correct strategy that a lot of people seem to be following, both on the media supplier and the operator side, is very much be part of the herd. So as long as you're doing what the majority of other people are doing, you're probably very safe. Uh, a few people have gone ahead of the pack, and there's probably a few laggards as well. But as long as you're with the majority, it's going to be very hard to prosecute or to uh, give everybody problems. So as long as everybody moves as one group, it's probably the safest strategy. And that's basically what we're seeing right now. Very good. Andres, do we have you back? Can you hear me, Andres? No, I'll we'll move on to my next question for Frank. Hi, Frank. How are you? Hi. Um, uh, I'm fine. Oh. And uh, thank you first uh, for the invitation and uh, to, to Willem for having this conference. I think it's a great idea. Let me ask you, how, how are operators, uh, sports, casino, poker, and multi-product operators, uh, media owners and affiliates preparing for the completion of this transition period? Um, we've heard from Fintin that as of right now, only a, a few days out, six days out, not much has have changed. But what needs to happen next? And um, during this period, do you expect that operators should become more aggressive in their marketing in an attempt to gain market share before further restrictions ensue? Well, um, the last two weeks have been very busy and very hectic, uh, to be honest, because uh, you, you should note that the transition regime kicked in or was published on the 1st of October. And um, it, it, it kicked in on the, on the 15th of October. So that left the operators uh, for two weeks uh, to start implementations. I, I know some of them have started earlier, but uh, I mean, uh, as an operator, you need to wait for, uh, for an official publication. So um, yeah, that was really hectic and, and chaotic. And when you look at the operator's website now, they are all working hard uh, on meeting the requirements and to comply uh, with the new regime. And uh, when you look around, the big ones, I, I would say, are almost compliant. And um, uh, yeah, the top 10 operators in the market, I would say, are on a good way to meet all requirements very soon. And from the media owner side, uh, of course, there was also a lot of chaos because nobody was aware that this was coming on a short notice. And uh, of course, they had questions to the operators, uh, what, uh, what happens now? And, uh, and uh, it all came together with, with the issuance of the sports betting licenses, of the 15 licenses. And, and now, of course, the media owners uh, have to deal with, with, this, with this new situation. Uh, and they will, will re re request uh, from, the, from the advertisers that they are still in the licensing application process or already have a license. And for the affiliate side, I would say uh, uh, Fintan is uh, going to answer this better. Hey, hey, let me ask you the follow-up question, though, Frank. Um, do you think operators during this transitional period are going to be aggressive? Is there a, is there a tendency to um, go have a land grab and do as much as you can before no. the 1st of July next year? No, I wouldn't say so. I mean, working in this industry for uh, 16 years, and especially since 2012, the industry was very visible in the market, on TV, on, on the digital side. I mean, I would not think that you can do much more, <laughs> to be honest. Maybe different players showing up now, but um, especially looking at the, at the casino side, uh, that was a, a huge increase in advertising activities for the last three years, I would say, with the Schlossig-Holstein-based licenses. Um, but um, I, I would think that the operators are more analyzing the situation now. What, how will the authorities react? Uh, yeah, will they look for product compliance? And um, I think it is, it's, it's, more, um, it's a more cautious approach now. 
Fintan, following up with that, um, are affiliates acting aggressively now or is it business as usual until next year? Um, it, it depends. And so from one perspective, it's, it's business as usual because we, you know, affiliates still need to generate traffic. They're still selling traffic. Uh, they're dealing with operators. Obviously, from a compliance perspective, you know, a lot of feedback has come in from a handful of operators. So updating websites and making sure... Um, business partners and stuff are happy is, is super, super important. I think from a, the, the big focus, it, it, you, you will see some affiliates trying to leave the market. So I think there will be some opportunities for M&A within the space because some affiliates are going to, well, why even bother? And the risk is too much and, and I can't handle it. So there's definitely going to be M&A opportunity um, over, the next, over the next year, uh, particularly as the, the revenue share models and stuff uh, kick in. Uh, the changes there so i could definitely see that happening but it, maybe if operators are restricted in the advertising they're doing maybe there's some opportunities for affiliates there too but i'd need to speak with my lawyers first before i could confirm that i love those answers andreas i understand you're back yes can you hear me okay do we have more a little more volume for andreas you're back but we still can't quite hear you let me turn it up in the room Okay, Andreas, are you there now? Yes. Okay. Um, we were going to, I was going to start everything off with you kind of giving us a little backdrop. We've moved ahead from that a little bit now, and I'm sure you've heard most of it. But um, can you give us a little uh, update as to the major changes that have been applied since, um, since the transitional period has begun? Yes, I can. Welcome again from my side. In the context of the transitional regime, the importance of advertising for those players who are willing to play to the legal and protected gaming market was again and again emphasized from all associations. Only functioning advertising can lead to the regulated market. In the end, however, the federal states decided that the new advertising rules of the Interstate Treaty 2021 cannot be applied in the transition period. The distinction must be made against this background. Regarding the advertising of sports betting, it currently rules based on the Interstate Treaty that came into force on January this year remains as long as the advertisers focus and focuses slowly on sports betting. This applies to the holders of the 15 licenses issued last week, as well as to those providers who have applied for a license but have not yet received it. In addition, multi-channel offers with a sports betting motive can be advertised if they if the other channels, that means virtual slots or online poker, comply with the transition rules. No changes also apply to advertising for online casino offers that are provided on the basis of a license from the state of Schleswig-Holstein. This is expressly regulated in the transition provisions. So, um, the offer and the advertising of these online casinos um, do not have to be adapted to the legal situation according to the new interstate treaty. There's agreement among all um, federal states. Therefore, the advertising ban that still exists in the transition period until the new interstate treaty next year comes into force applies only to providers of virtual slots and online poker without a license from Schleswig-Holstein. That means, in the end, if the providers of virtual slots and online poker are willing to regulate, it's not allowed to advertise their offers during this time, unfortunately. Okay, we're still going to we're going to work on your audio a little bit, I think, as we go forward. So let me go back. Uh, let me go back to question for Frank. Um, <clears throat> Frank, we, we saw some numbers earlier on one of our sessions regarding the growth of the uh, GGR in the German market, taking into account the regulation in 2021 and everything that's happening today. Um, 
what it didn't indicate was whether or not we expect to see that growth being um, restricted because of the new regulation or if that growth is continuing as it would have given the market conditions stayed gray. Um, do you think that we are going to see a reduction on player deposits, on advertising, and on GGR come 2021? Um, yes, I think for the for the GGR, it's pretty obvious. If you if you uh, need to shut down your bank holder games, the live casino, uh, the blackjack, and the roulette, it will uh, it will create a great. Uh, decrease in, in, in GGR, I don't know, about 15, 20 percent. It it's, uh, de depends maybe on the operator. But uh, yeah, that's, I mean, um, uh, this is the one thing, I think, the live casino or the table games. Um, and there's, nobody can uh, ex expect or calculate when these are coming back. I mean, it could be, um, I don't know, a case of uh, litigation in the future when there are licenses only for uh, brick and mortar casinos, as it is again a limitation of licenses uh, in, in that product area. Um, and the other big issues I think are the, um, uh, is the deposit limit and that, that uh, remains to be seen if that is really something that can be set up in a way that it is cross operator. I don't know any other regulation where this has happened. Uh, it is quite a technical challenge, I would say. What we know is from the sports betting license, which has now been issued, that uh, you there we have a stake limit, by the way, of uh, um, a thousand euro per operator per month. And that can be, uh, there can be exemptions from that stakes limit. You can increase that stake limit uh by uh fulfilling uh, certain due diligence enhanced due diligence checks on players uh, on the players funds that uh, he has the funds and 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 so forth what is not known if this these rules would also apply for a deposit limit which will kick in in uh, july 21 so if that would happen that would help uh yeah that would help the market to to channelize more effectively, I would say, because obviously with the thousand euro deposit limit uh, or stake limit in this, on the sports side, it will, uh, yeah, it will hurt um, the most valuable players. And uh, that's what the regulation is for, I would say, that we uh, channelize these players as well. Vincent, let me follow up. I, I know you took a slightly different approach to looking at this than Frank in our previous discussions. Um, what do you think is going to happen to uh, to GGR in this market? So, f from my perspective, I'm a big believer that the data beats opinion, and I think when situations like this, it's always better if we can kind of pull back on the data. So, what we've been doing um, this year is looking at, say, for example, the impact of the extra regulations in Sweden. Um, I think there's a graphic available if Willem's about. Um, for them to put the graph up. So what we've done is we've looked at um, Google search. We're using Google searches and Google trends as a proxy for user intent and where the market is going. So the yellow line is queries for online casino in Sweden. And then the blue line is queries for a basket of terms that are basically people looking for offshore casinos. So, and apologies for any Swedes in the audience, my, my Swedish is dreadful. So, uh, casino Uten license, so casino with no license, uh, casino Uten spell pause, which is the responsible gambling tool that's uh, available in Sweden, uh, casino Uten svenska license, so no Swedish license. And what we can see there is it's a 710% it's a increase in Google searches uh, by Swedes up until the end of April, or sorry, the end of March uh, 2020. And that trend's growing, and we're kind of working on the on the new data right now. And what this shows is, and what we're estimating is that approximately, say, 30% of the Swedish online casino market is actually going offshore. What we wanted to do then is, okay, well, who's servicing that demand? So, Willem, if you can change slides, please. When we look at this graph, we've identified 54 brands, uh, online brands that are targeting uh, the Swedish market uh, without a Swedish license. And as we can see here, the search volume uh, for these brands is extrapolating very, very quickly and completely outpacing the, the demand, say, for online casino. So.
if we bring this back to the German conversation of what do we expect to see in Germany with these new restrictions, you're going to see this graph on steroids. And so it's basically just the case of how big does this get and how quickly does this happen? So if you're an operator, you know, you've got to ask yourself, do you want to go down the, the licensed German route? Um, or do you want to service the German market from offshore? If you're a player, and don't forget, all of this is always going to be player-led. If the demand's not there, uh, there's going to be nobody to service it. So the players themselves are going to look at their the offering they can now get in Germany versus the offering they can get offshore. Uh, offshore Germany, great player experience, great customer service, bonuses, the range of games they want, um, deposit limits, etc. So all that's going to happen is German demand is just going to shift offshore. So I think when we go back to the GGR question, what's going to be the impact? I don't have the exact numbers, but it's definitely going to be significant. We looked at that 1,000 pound, in, or sorry, 1,000 euro deposit limits as well when we discussed this, uh, when we discussed this earlier. And um, you thought that we, while there might be an impact on GGR overall, you did think that play would slow down rather ah. than be eliminated and certainly go offshore because so, you thought people would just spend their discretional um, budget for gaming over a longer period of time. Do, do you still maintain that you expect that to be the case? I, I think for a lot of players, yes. So there's some, some fantastic examples of this. So if you look at, say, uh, Tom, Tombola, which is a bingo brand in the UK, and it's also so it's the biggest bingo brand in the UK, biggest bingo brand in Spain and Italy as well, I believe. If you look at the at a product level, and they've been doing this for years, they've had very, very strict uh, deposit limits uh, in the gameplay. They've had very strict uh, max stakes limits as well in the gameplay. And all that you see is compared to other bingo brands when you do, say, the, the, the benchmarking, is that the, the player lifetime uh, just lasts longer. So it's the same player value, but instead of it being over six, eight, 12 months, it's over 16 to 24 months. So I think the, the notion of player limits can make a lot of sense if it's backed up with an affordability uh, analysis. If it's not backed up with some sort of affordability analysis, you will see a huge chunk of these players go offshore for their gameplay. And the ones that remain, you will still get you know, the average lifetime value for that cohort of players, assuming they stick around with a German casino. Andreas, back to you. What do you think this means for domestic gross above the line advertising spend in the online gaming market in Germany. Um, if GGR indeed will come down, does that mean we're going to see less advertising because the um, companies, because companies will be looking to maximize their profit? Or are we going to see um, increased advertising because we're going to have a very definitive number of licensed operators that are here and able to advertise? That's very difficult to foresee. At the moment, uh, the economic importance of gambling advertising in Germany is very, very high. Um, in TV advertising alone, gambling companies invested the media gross of approximately 450 million euros last year. To give you a short idea, this is equivalent to 1.5 times the gross spendings per year advertising. That means it's much higher. Um, and it's today a very important factor in the German advertising market. So when we think about the future, in my opinion, on the one hand, Germany is still a developing country um, when it comes to gambling. That means that everything depends on how the market actually develops economically. Following my information and experience, and I think um, uh, Frank mentioned it, a lot of gambling providers will go into the new regulated market. So, uh, especially the bigger ones. On the other, on the other hand, it is the task of, of the market players, of the associations, um, to come to in a dialogue with politicians step by step to increase flexibility in regulating the main pain points and to improve um, an economical sense for market. That means if we can force these very 
first direction. At the end, I can imagine that um, um, the, the economical growth as well as the spendings um, in, in advertising um, will increase um, sometimes um, more than compared to the last years. It's, it's still very difficult to hear, Andreas. I'm sorry. Um, Frank, though, I've, I've got a great audio connection to you, so can, let me follow up that question. Um, in your opinion, are incumbents going to try to continue to grow this market, or is this market now set kind of in stone and the incumbents who are large have a greater advantage? Or do you see new licensees being able to effectively gain market share despite the new regulations, not just in player activity, but in advertising ability. Yeah, yeah. I think the the incumbents are always in a better position. And uh, if you look at the German market, and as Andrea said, um, there is there has been a lot of advertising activity around the main assets in sports, for example, in the Bundesliga. Uh, there is even an official partnership by the market leading operator with the DFL. And um, I, I mean, uh, this is a hard fought space, and there can't be much more advertising, and there can't be much more spent in that area. Maybe the prices will inflate again but uh, I wouldn't believe so um, so it will be uh, I would say difficult or interesting if uh, new market entrants will be able to grab market share um, but there may be some interesting ones that we need to look at I mean Odset is coming back to the market the state-run operator uh, which has been off the market for many, many years on the digital side. Uh, but the, the, the brand awareness is still there. So uh, that will be very interesting how they will act uh, with also with in terms of advertising spend. Uh, that is from the sports side. Also, we have seen on the list of licensees uh, last week that uh, Bet Victor is now entering the market and there is uh, as these URLs were, were mentioned, where, um, where they achieved the license for, that there is a cooperation uh, ongoing or the speculation about the cooperation with the Bild, so with the biggest newspaper in Germany. So this is a, a, quite a new uh, vehicle, I would say, where uh, a media company uh, cooperates uh, with, a, with, a, with a betting operator and then forms a new label and uh, knowing the Axel Springer Verlag, they have a lot of media power. So that will be also an interesting one. But for the other ones, I, I would say yeah, the advertising activity will stay as is. I mean, none of the incumbents will give up their premium assets that they have, like looking at uh, Tipico and Bwin. And also the other ones, uh, of course, uh, what they earn will be less. So uh, GVC already announced uh, the uh, EBITDA hit they will take next year in Germany because of the regulation. So um, I think we know from other regulations as well, new market entrants will ha have a tough time in getting market share, and, uh, but the, the local incumbents will, will stay because there's no an, an alternative to, uh, to leave the market or to give up space. Why should they? It's still a lucrative market. Fintan, I'd love to hear your perspective, but let me quickly ask Frank um, a, a follow-up question, um, a follow-up question to that. We're expecting something around 50 licensees next year in Germany from, from what I've been reading. Do you think in five years' time, Frank, there'll be more or less than 50 licensees? How many licensees do you think this market can support? <laughs> Yeah, there's always the question, do you have a good or a bad regulation, I think. We heard that in France, uh, it's, which is also a big, big market, uh, and there are only 15 licensees left uh, as a casino is not regulated. And if it's not affordable, uh, companies will, will leave the market then again if it's not sustainable. Um, Germany is a bit bigger. I think the regulation is is a bit better than what we have seen in France as casino is regulated. Um, I think a lot will depend uh, on the, let's say, how the dialogue with the uh, re regular with the regulator will work, and um, if there, you know, if the law is not being changed, if there are flexibilities in uh, interpreting the new guidelines and restrictions, and then I can imagine that uh, the number of licenses will 
Yeah, it will stay. But what we always see is uh, some kind of consolidation, uh, right? That I mean, in I think in Sweden it's also like that. That the the, the former monopolist or the the state-run operator owns forty to fifty percent of the market, and then you have four to five operators who own also forty percent, and uh, then they have ten percent market share divided by. I don't know, 40 operators, and that is not sustainable at the end. It will, there will be consolidation then. Fintan, um, I want to see if you echoed Frank's point of view, or if um, you thought there was more, um, more opportunity for licensees, given that you're looking at perhaps the market from an affiliate or from alternative advertising point of views. So I, I'm, I'm an optimist at heart. Um, and if I was the CMO of a German facing operator, I'd be kind of looking at things slightly different uh, to Frank. So I think the, the, the first thing is the data. So the average sports better will, will have five to six different betting accounts. So I, I never see things in terms of uh, market share. It's a fight for share of wallet. So how are you going to get that thousand euros out of that player? And I think that's going to be the thing. If there was a new entrant into the market, well, you can use maybe the deposit limit and the play limit to your advantage. So if you designed a bonus, that's very, very... So if you're a player at the beginning of the month, so you've got 31 days or 30 days and you've got your thousand euros and that's what you want to spend on gambling this month, you're going to have to make a rational decision, ideally, of where do I get the best possible value and where do I get the best possible gameplay uh, for this money for this month? Because my, my gameplay is now very, very valuable to a lot of different companies due to all the restrictions. And it's assuming I don't go offshore, so we'll ignore offshore for a minute. If I was a, a new entrant into the market, I would design everything around that decision moment at the beginning of the month. Um, and I think there's there's a lot of clever things you can do uh, with welcome offers, bonusing, CRM, retention, etc. Um, obviously, I do agree with Frank. Incumbents always have a massive advantage. They've got the database, they've got the contact details, uh, they've got the payment information. So they do have a, a marketing um, advantage, particularly a cost of acquisition advantage initially. However, historically, as we've seen, it can be very, very hard to maintain that. Um, and aggressive entrants can come in and take big, big chunks out of the out of the share of spend uh, from the incumbent operators who are lazy or too slow to adapt. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> I, well, I want to talk a little bit about the affiliate market, Fintan. Um, sure. Because that's one of the biggest issues in the new legislation, whereby rev share is going to be disallowed. Um, what's that ultimately going to do to the affiliate channel in Germany? How important is that channel? And what does it mean for the larger iGaming market here? Sure. So I think, you know, um, everybody knows affiliates are, are a key acquisition channel um, in every market. Uh, particularly in Germany, um, when there can be restrictions around other advertising channels, the and I don't see that changing. I think the you know the affiliate marketing is not dead in Germany. Affiliate marketing is not going away in Germany. It's here to stay, and it's going to be a big important part of everybody's life for forever. And I think that's just a fact. Um, when we look the the banning of rev share, it completely changes the nature of what happens between now and July. Because the, the revenue earned for the player now has, instead of lifetime revenue share, it's now a, a nine month, and then it's going to be on a decay factor all the way to July when the, when the regulation changes. So that makes a big, uh, a big impact on things. What we need to look at then is, it's how do operators react? And I think you're going to see kind of a couple of different buckets. You're going to see the operators who overlook this, this this problem and this situation don't really tackle it head on and just kind of want to take a wait and see. And then there's the operators who tackle this head on and try and get a, an advantage over their competitors and really try and work with affiliates in a way that makes sense. So ultimately, all marketing spend is meant to be based in some sort of performance metrics. So revenue share is probably the, the ultimate performance metric because it's a win-win partnership between the affiliate and the operator. Uh, the operator is only paying for, for actual activity, for actual gameplay, and it's a percentage of profits. Um, what that does is it encourages, which is why I don't understand why it's been banned either, because revenue share is actually a great way to make sure that affiliates are abiding by rules and legislation and regulation because they're very much long-term committed to the market and to the to the operators and to the partners they're working with. So cancelling it doesn't make sense to me, but we'll, we'll, we'll ignore that for a second. 
Um, but ultimately, it's, it's based in performance-based marketing. So if you're a marketer and you're sitting on your marketing budget and you need to divide out and allocate your marketing budget to all the different channels, so be it media partners, TV, out of home, print, affiliates, Google, Facebook, whoever else, you're always going to start with the things that you can measure and the things that you can track. Uh, affiliates as a digital channel is something you can measure and track very, very easily. And there's a track record of high intent performance-based uh, traffic. So if you can't pay rev share, you're going to have to come up with a very clever method of basically performance-based pay that makes sense. So it's got, things are going to change the CPAs, CPLs, um, tenancy deals based on performance. And so the, the rev share disappears, but if you use the data and allocate budget based on performance and the data, you can basically proxy back in uh, player value and rev share anyway into any kind of deal like you know a cpc based deal still makes sense so for this month based on your last month's player data we will pay you 15 euros per click that's still sort of rev share but it's not rev share it's a, a cost per click model which is very similar to say google facebook and twitter do and it's the same calculation that an operator would do anyway so i don't really see this having an effect it's more a case of which operators jump on top of this now and get ahead of it and if you can lock in affiliates now um, with good win-win deals that make sense, you're going to just leave your competitors behind because the affiliates are going to be, oh, well, this makes perfect sense to me. I understand this model as well. This is win-win. You're going to get all our traffic. So creativity is going to rule the day as far as affiliate remuneration, according to Finton. For the sake of brevity, because we only have five minutes left, I think I'll jump straight to a summary before we go to some Slido and audience questions. Remember, there's a um, Slido opportunity if you're in the room to ask questions via your mobile phone. Um, <clears throat> re uh, regarding Fintan and affiliate marketing um, and creativity in affiliate marketing, I could see that happening in the market for certain. Um, but it does seem like when markets are highly regulated and they develop um, uh, clear winners and clear giants in those marketplaces. Generally speaking, the desire to have affiliate and affiliate traffic goes down when you could above the line market and your large. So quite possibly in the future, you'll see the largest companies um, going back to the regulator and saying, hey, wait, we can't do anything that, that that's that creative because that's um, going fundamentally against your intention for not offering a CPA. So I think affiliate will be here now, but we'll have to really watch that space to see what happens going forward in the future. Um, what marketing channels will develop? Frank's made a good point that media partnerships developing could um, create the next large operators in this space. We're seeing that happen currently in the United States in the sports betting market. So it's certainly um, a, a uh, method that's been tried and tested in other markets before. We address Black market. Fintan showed us what's happening in Sweden, and I will leave uh, my thoughts with a, a question, and that is: Are there cultural differences between the Swedish player in the Swedish market um, and the German player in the German market, which would tend to convince the Swedish player that it's a good idea to play in a black market, whereby a German player may make the decision that they only want to play in a licensed market? I'm not sure. Again, only time will tell. With that, I think we have a few minutes for our questions, either from attendees or from our Slido deck. Would you like to join me, Willem? Exactly. So we'll have a look at the Slido questions. In the meantime, if there's any questions in the room, please raise your hand and we'll make sure a microphone gets to you. Um, but let's switch to Slido and see what we have. It's in front of you here, uh, Michael. Great. Um, are, there, are there any restrictions regarding free casino games for affiliates? Casinos can't offer them without registration. Does this apply for affiliate websites too? Frank, do you know the answer to that? <laughs> yeah, it's more a lawyer should answer this. It's an interesting one. It is correct that uh, operators um, who wants to offer free free to play ca casino or yeah free to play casino games, uh, they must uh, fulfill the KYC requirements um, like any other operator uh, with other products. And I think you are not even allowed to, to offer uh, bank holder games like uh, roulette and uh, blackjack again as, as free to play. So then the question is, what does it say about affiliates? I would say if, if affiliates and your Kaufman mentioned that, that um, they also need to change uh, their, 
their names, uh, it's changing from casino to, to slots uh, when facing, uh, when targeting German, German traffic, I would also assume that they need to apply the same rules as the operators when they promote this. So in that case, there are restrictions, yes. Did we miss anything on that, Andreas? Do you hear me now? No. Then, huh, unfortunately not. Unfor I'm going to move ahead because now, unfortunately, your audio is still not very good. Uh, my next question, uh, Fintan, do you see any opportunities for affiliates? Where did that question go? It just moved. Oh, do you see opportunities for affiliates to promote both licensed and offshore operators? Um, if I use the US as an example, my assumption would be licensed operators will not want to be on the same website as offshore operators. Uh, so we'd see that, say, in the UK, or we'd see that in say, the US as a, as a simple example. So I would assume for Germany, any licensed German operator will not want to be on the same website as an unlicensed operators targeting Germany. Frank, a very difficult question. What's a good marketing mix once the market is regulated? Well, that's my daily business, to be honest, for the last 15 years. Um, yeah, good marketing mix. It, it depends also on your budget, right? I mean, if you if you have a small budget, then of course you start with performance marketing on the digital side, on affiliation, on search engine optimization, and so on. But uh, knowing the market and who was successful here um, also showed that uh, the above the line channels are quite important to build awareness, to build trust. And uh, I mean, there will be restrictions on TV uh, with the watershed ban for virtual slots. Uh, once regulation kicks in, uh, but apart from that, every channel is is open. Uh, print out of home, digital, social media marketing, um, and the new new channel is is opening now with the regulation, which is PPC. Uh, so Google AdWords are will be possible, I assume, once once you are licensed. So um, yeah, I mean the marketing mix is a. Uh, it's, it depends on the budget and where you stand as an operator. Are you a new entrant? Are you a, uh, um, an operator like Otset who already has an awareness footprint in the market for many, many years? So, um, yeah, um, that should be the what answer. Part, what part, Fintan, of the customer acquisition mix is currently affiliate based? Just a rough estimate in the German market. Uh, I would assume 50%. 50%. Okay, great. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time that we have, but I, this session is largely about affiliate marketing. So I do want to add one very final thought of my own. Um, value add from affiliates is something that we've seen develop in markets where affiliates are either limited or there are several or there is a lot of mass media marketing. So I'm, I think Fintan would probably agree with me that going forward, we'll probably see new types of affiliates offering new products that somehow add value either to the player or to the operator. And the innovation that comes out of the affiliate market will start to come from perhaps a more technical and AI innovation suite than we've seen in the past. So there is a lot to look forward uh, to going forward, and this is certainly an exciting time to be in the German market. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael Caselli, and it's been my pleasure to host. Thank you for our panel, and thank you to our audience.